Hello everyone and welcome to Y Jasmine Everyday Cooking. I'm Huma Siddiqui and as you know, I just love to create simple, easy, but delicious recipes. So today we have a very colorful and very interesting menu. I'm going to make a pizza. And you know, we will talk about how many different types of course we can, you can have a good pizza and what does it really mean to have a good pizza. And then we are going to make some bruschetta as well. So the pizza ingredients, some of them, I'm going to use some of the greens and spinach. These are these beautiful peppers, can you see that? It's, um, it's just uh, kind of soaked and you can find them in the olive uh, uh, you know, section in the grocery store and they're just soaked in olive oil and it just adds a beautiful color and delicious flavor. So I'm gonna use that and some black olives, always great. And some of our cumin gouda, which is you know, one of the white jasmine ex exclusive cheeses. And what it has is has whole cumin seeds and chili flakes. And because it's Gouda, it just melts beautifully. So that's what's going to go in there, and also um, some chicken that we are gonna start making. So let's start with that. Just sort of on a medium heat, you wanna saute the chicken um, just lightly so that it's still, you know, the, the key to making good chicken for your pizza is you want to saute it very lightly and you wanna keep it very moist. So those two items you have to remember. So as it starts to get warm, again, never, you never want to add anything cold, uh, you know, your oil into a cold pan. Always make sure that it's warm. And then just add some olive oil. Make sure it's very well coated. And why it, which it should be very well coated? Because you want whatever you want to add to your pan to really, really uh, cook very evenly. So if it's coated very nicely, that would help. So just little things when you want to, when you're cooking, you want to pay attention to, to your pan and to your ingredients, what is really happening in there. So let's add some whole cumin as the oil is warm. And some um, cinnamon. So just a cinnamon stick, just half of it. What it will do is it will add just that sort of the sweeter flavor to your chicken. And you know, it kind of, once you add your spices, it's a nice blend. And we'll add a bunch of garlic, of course. And it will all work together. So now this is a sort of sizzling. So let's add our chicken into it. And this is just boneless chicken strips that I've cut very, you know, sort of small pieces so that it cooks very quickly. Hear that sizzle? That's a very good thing. Just kind of saute it a little bit. And we'll add a little bit of salt and some of our saji masala. Now I think I'm gonna add tandoori to this. Why tandoori? Because our tandoori has really 13 different spices in it. So it has, you know, chili powder, turmeric, garlic, all really good stuff, lemon peel. So it has this combination that will go really well with our cumin gouda. As it starts to saute, I'm gonna add a little bit of our garlic. And just a bit, bit more. A um, lot of flavor, good for your heart, you know, why not? <laughs> I don't see any, any reason at all. So here, oh, it smells just heavenly. Let's find our tandoori masala. Just a little bit of that. And again, be generous with your ingredients because whenever you are cooking something, just think about how are you going to add flavors. If you're not going to add garlic, if you're not going to add whole spices or ground spices, where is the flavor going to come from? Magically. So let's add a bit of that. And just a little bit of chili powder. Keep that heat going. As this is going to start coming together, I want to um, start building our base so for our pizza. So here is my pizza stone. Let's get it over here. And what I did was I bought, um, uh, you know, the base 
the pizza dough. And it's already made and you can buy it in one of the grocery stores. And this is our pesto. This is one of my favorite uh, bases. And what you want to do is just kind of, this is a good stress reliever too. So if you're stressed out, make some pizza. That's the message. Just a little bit of olive oil on our pizza stone. Just very little, just to make sure that things don't stick too badly. And there. And what you want to do is just kind of stretch it out. You can use a rolling pin if you want. Sometimes it's a little defeating using a rolling pin because it keeps coming back. It hasn't worked for me in the past. But you're welcome to use it if you want. So these are two small pizza doughs that I bought. Just put them together. Keep an eye on your chicken. And what the important part for our pizza is really to make sure the dough doesn't, uh, it gets cooked, it's a little crispy. So what I like to do is usually use the, uh, you know, spread out the dough and then add a little bit of olive oil to it a little bit of you know whole cumin seeds and then put it in the oven for just a few minutes because the worst thing you can do is your chicken put everything on it and then put it in the oven one time your pizza dough will take longer to cook and your chicken is already cooked and it's going to dry out cheese is going to cook at a different uh, temperature and different speed so let's put this in first for a few minutes really good exercise. Make sure your um, ends are always kind of not so thick. So just bang, bang, bang a little bit. Spread it out. My chicken is almost done. And it's very, very tender because we just very lightly sauteed it. I'm going to actually switch it off and add some cilantro in a minute. So a little bit of our olive oil on it. And some whole cumin. And it will add the crunch and the flavor. Because we have cumin in our chicken as well as uh, in our cheese. So this will go in the um, oven for about three or four minutes. So we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll start, we're gonna start working on our bruschetta. So hang in there. Welcome back to White Jasmine Everyday Cooking. Our pizza base is in the oven. Our chicken is almost done. I just wanna add some fresh uh, cilantro to it. And then we're gonna start making the bruschetta. So just roll it up and chop it. Easy enough. And look at all these ingredients. I mean, if you look at these kind of ingredients in your kitchen, how can you not be compelled to cook? You just are, you just have to. You know, there's no way around it. So a bunch of cilantro, another layer of flavor. And then I'm gonna start chopping our tomatoes. Now, for the tomatoes, I bought these beef steak tomatoes today because for a couple of reasons. First of all, they're nice and big, very a little firm, a little soft. Roma tomatoes are good too, but when you're making something like this, you'll have to chop quite a few of them. So, you know, let's just get the big ones, chop them up, and the, the flavor is great. You know, as long as you can see, um, they, you want them to be ripe, especially in winter at this time. Sometimes you have to be very careful with tomatoes because they're not always looking the best. Sometimes they look kind of sad and you, you don't want that. And it's just the season, you know. So pick your tomatoes that are looking wonderful and um, ripe, but at the same time firm. You can see when I'm cutting it, it's, a little, it's not all going to get all mushy. So here, just kind of 
chop it. And of course you want to have a sharp knife, as always, um, so that you don't mess up your tomatoes. That is always a test for your knives. And I love tomatoes, personally. I can just add a little bit of salt and um, chili powder and some lemon juice and just eat it just like that. It's just so good. So we're going to add this and then a little bit of our saji masala is going to go in here and also some green onions because these are the things, the fresh flavors I want to add in addition to some of the spices. And some cilantro, of course. So add all this. One more to chop. And you have to mix all this together first in a bowl and then we'll start putting it on our bruschetta. Now bruschetta can be, have so many different toppings. You can really choose. It doesn't always have to be tomatoes. Um, you can be creative and choose other things. Bruschetta mainly, I think, is just kind of, you want some bread with some cheese and some of your special uh, fillings. Whatever it is. So we're almost done. And this is a very quick, again, quick recipe, but delicious. And very refreshing too. So let's get one more, and we're good to go. So our pizza base is doing good, and what we want to do is finish the bruschetta first. So let's add a little bit of salt, and some of our saji masala. Now don't be afraid to add salt to your dishes because, you know, your body still needs it. There's a lot of sodium in a lot of processed food. Avoid that, but add real salt to your food is what I'm going to say. Let's add some green onions. Look how fresh that looks. It's just going to be fabulous. And I like to just chop the green part because, you know, I'm a big fan of color and, of course, flavor. But this just adds that perfect flavor that I need. And some cilantro. Just a bunch of it. And then we'll start to put that on our bread. And this is just Italian bread, freshly baked. You can uh, buy from any of the grocery stores and just slice them. We'll add a little bit of olive oil first, and then our topping. See all these colors? You can just almost start to taste the flavors. At least I can. Just mix it together. And then we have our bread. Let's make some room here. A little bit of olive oil. And just to, you know, when you add the olive oil, we'll just crisp it up a little bit. And that's what you're looking for when you're looking for bruschetta. Just a little bit more. You can use butter too. It's going to be good. You know, butter is, you can't complain about that. So let's throw all of this in. Just a little bit on each one of these. And then we'll top with the, our saji barbecue cheese and it will melt. It will be fabulous. I'm going to finish putting all this together. So, and then we'll get our pizza assembled. So, hang in there. Welcome back to Why Jasmine Everyday Cooking. We're almost getting there. Look at this beautiful pizza base. And it is all puffed up. It's nice and golden brown, how I like it. Because you don't want to cook it, overcook it, because then your pizza is just going to be so tough in your mouth. You want it a little bit softer, a little bit crispier. 
So our base is looking fabulous. I can't tell you more about it. But let's add our chicken first. Well, let's add, green, add our greens first. So here's some fresh spinach. I'm just going to throw that in here and some mixed greens. See how it adds some color? You're going to like it. <laughs> and people at home, if your mouth is watering, that's a good thing. Maybe next time you should just be here in our studio <laughs> to try it. So just a nice big layer. I'm not a big fan of adding tomatoes to my pizza or a sauce at the bottom because then it just gets, I don't know, it just gets soggy and mushy. And you know, who likes like mushy food? So let's do that. Take some of these peppers, just want to kind of chop them just in halves and add, throw in some color in it. Look how beautiful these are. I love them and you are going to love the flavor of these too. And again, you know, a recipe is really a combination of all the flavors coming together is teamwork. That's what it is. Let's just chop them roughly and add them. I hope you can start to taste the flavors by now, you know. And start to think like having a party in your mouth. It's a really good thing. Some black olives. And these things you can really buy from the olive bar. Very easy to uh, throw them on your pizza. Just add a ton of flavor. And again, with pizza, you want to think about what are your favorite ingredients, what goes together, you know, very important, of course, and how every pizza can be delicious with many different flavors on it. So just go for the variety, cook something beautiful every day. Why not? For White Jasmine, we think that a mealtime is an event. And especially if you are, you can share it with people that you care about, then you know, life is very good. Getting there. Just a few more. And then I'm going to add our chicken and then cheese. And if you are one of those fussy people, you don't like black olives or you don't like this or that, choose your ingredients. Just bring, but remember to bring the flavors and the color together. That is what is important. It really doesn't matter. Let's put all the chicken in. And I also like making the pizza like this because, you know, it's a very, uh, sort of you can touch everything. And um, it's kind of fun. See the layers, the colors? Looking very pretty. A lot of cumin in here. Um, and just I just love the, you know, the colors. Let's kind of spread it out. And the last layer will be our cheese. So I wanted to make sure that we have enough chicken that every time you take a bite, at least you get a you know, couple of pieces. All that garlic going in here. It's fabulous. And hopefully it will be one of the unforgettable experiences for our audience tonight. Let's see if it works. And then our cheese. Just grated cumin gouda. It will melt beautifully and just create the last layer that I want. Almost done. Then it will go back in the oven at 400 degrees for almost about, I would say, five or seven minutes. Because remember, your base is almost done. Your chicken is cooked. So you don't want to overcook any of your ingredients. All you want is the cheese to melt. Just cover it in cheese. 
And this is Wisconsin, of course. Why not? <laughs> There's plenty of cheese. So we'll take a short break. When we come back, you can check out the pizza and also the bruschetta. Welcome back to Why Jasmine Everyday Cooking. We are almost done with this meal. It's looking delicious. It's looking very colorful. And here, I want to show you the bruschetta first. So you can see all the cheese is melted. And the bread is not too crispy. And that's the deal about, um, you know, how I like my bruschetta. I don't want the, you know, everything to be falling off every time I take a bite into a bruschetta because that's what usually happens. The bread is just too crisp. So you want to keep it a little bit softer. And here, I'll just throw that on here. Look how pretty that looks. And again, food has to look beautiful. Nobody likes, believe it or not, nobody likes ugly food. <laughs> and especially if it's something that you're trying for the first time. I mean, why would anybody be compelled thinking that, oh, hopefully it will taste good. Um, so that's the first step. Look at how, um, oh, I can't wait to try it. But you know, I usually don't try my food. At most of the shows, if you watch, you know, people at the end of the show, they try their own food and say, oh, it's just so good. I like to wait for my audience to say that because of course I'm going to like my what I make. <laughs> you know, that's kind of obvious. So anyway, I'm going to go get the pizza. Now look at our pizza. I just got it out of the oven. It's looking delicious. The base is again a little bit more browner and golden brown on the on the edges. So fabulous. Let's cut it, shall we? And you can see the base is pretty soft yet. I'm just going to cut a nice big slice. And I've been excited about actually using this pizza stone that I bought just a few weeks ago. And it's so much fun to go to those kitchen stores and buy something. <laughs> yeah, I try not to do that because then I guess it can get out of hand. You know, it's just so tempting. What are you going to do? Especially if, you know, if you like to cook like I do, it's always um, a lot of fun to do kitchen shopping. So here is a wonderful slice of pizza and some bruschetta. I hope you get a chance to try these recipes at home and enjoy them with people that you care about. Or just enjoy them by yourself. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with it. So we'll see you next week. <laughs>